Before we jump into adding SVG to our pages, I just wanted to have a brief discussion on what it is and show you how, well, how a lot of us will create it. You're going to see here that I've got a, an SVG file open in Chrome. Now, SVG, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, is essentially vector for the web. It's, you guys, it's awesome. I mean, this is kind of, it opens up a lot of new worlds because in the past, if we, let's suppose, wanted to have a logo or a button or something, we'd put in a, a GIF or a ping, and the problem is if it got bigger or smaller, it would look like crap. Well, SVG is essentially code. It's taking vector artwork that you create or generate, even with curves and gradients and different things like that, and turning it into code. And it's completely scalable. So if I take this thing and scale it, if you set it up right and do a good job, you can make it so it just scales. You can also make these things pretty small. They look really crisp and, you know, they work kind of like an image. There's a lot of ways you can work with them. You can also insert code or an image and do things like work with JavaScript and CSS to edit it on the fly or inside your web page. To give you an idea of where this started, I'm going to go over to Illustrator, and you can see that I've got an Illustrator file open here, and this is the, the same file. It's called logo.ai. And Illustrator, there's a lot of other file uh, programs you can use to create SVG. You don't have to use Illustrator, but Illustrator does a pretty good job these days. And you can see right here that I've got some text and different stuff. And the text I converted to paths just because I don't want to deal with fonts. That's something you'll learn about. But I can take this in Illustrator and go up to File and choose Save As. And this is in the latest version of Illustrator. And you'll see we have Compressed SVG, which I don't really use that often, or SVG. So we just save it as SVG. If we do that, if I go in and save, now I'm not going to kind of save over the top of what I have. So I'm going to save this. It's going to ask us a bunch of questions. Now, in Illustrator CC, the latest version, it actually did a lot of good things. It, it changed the, the profile, the type, etc. It did a lot of things to help us to, to kind of set up things so we don't have to do much in here. SVG profile, we're just going to use usually 1.1. We're going to tell it to be SVG, not Adobe. We're going to say only glyphs are used for subsetting. If you want, if you have fonts used, because it can actually use fonts in it. You can link to any images or raster images that you have, which is always, well, not always, but it can be a good thing to, to reduce file size. Also, I usually do not check preserve Illustrator editing capabilities because that adds a lot of file size, but it allows you to open it back up in Illustrator as an SVG file later. And the rest of the stuff, you're gonna see that there's a more options button here and a fewer options or less options. We now have a responsive, the ability to make it responsive or resize in a web page, which is awesome. And that's pretty much it. Once I click OK, I've got it. There's a lot of ways to make SVG, but this is just a simple way. Now, if I if I do that, if I save it as SVG, now I've already done that. You don't have to. Because as a matter of fact, you can see that I've got the logo SVG right there. Here's what it looks like if you actually look at the file. Right here. I just double-clicked on it. It opened it in Edge Code, and this is what SVG is. It's essentially, it's kind of, to me, it's almost like looking at PostScript back in the day. It's kind of plotting where things are going to go with gradients and fills and different that kind of thing. But it's code. So you could go in and create styles that affect these different parts or pieces. That's the one of the great things about SVG. Now with SVG, one of the things that we will do a lot of times, why don't you go into the Insert SVG folder. You're going to see I've got the original AI. I've got an SVG there. And I've got something called Logo Optimized SVG. When you create SVG from something like uh, Adobe Illustrator, matter of fact, before I jump in there, why don't you double click on Sites TXT and you can see that there are a lot of other tools you can use. Inkscape is one of them. You can also use something uh, like Sketch, I think, is another one. There's a bunch out there that are free tools you can use to draw and do things and then save it or create SVG. After we create it, these programs that, that create this SVG that we save as SVG sometimes don't do a great job optimizing it. So what you can do is you can go to what's called SVG, this, this uh, site right here. Let me copy that. I'm going to go over to my browser, and I'm going to paste it in and show you. This website by uh, this guy Peter, who is a godsend, let me tell you, uh, allows you to take, and you see right here, files created in Inkscape or Illustrator are particularly amenable to this optimization. You can take a file you create or you save as SVG, and you can upload it and optimize it, which is pretty neat. 
He also has a JavaScript version, which I have yet to try out. Uh, but you can go in and choose a file, go grab, let's say, the SVG, the file that you saved from Illustrator or other program, open it up, and you can say, let's upload it. You can also take the code that you have from SVG and paste it in here and load it in. I can upload it. You can say, okay, well, what do we want to do here? How do we want to optimize it? The great thing about optimizing is it's going to bring the file size down. Check this out. So you can say, okay, we want to be conservative or extreme. You have to take a look at the image quality and see what's going to work, though. Okay. So I'll say, let's say uh, optimization, we've got none. We can say, okay, let's just remove white space from the code. This is code after all. Okay. You can have namespaces that you remove, like remove all namespaces. You can try different things here. Remove empty elements, unnecessary groups, combine paths where possible. You got to be careful. It might affect appearance. Um, if you have, you got to be careful about these things here, remove gradients, etc. So you can just try different things. Okay. And if it affects the overall appearance or it doesn't, then you're good. You try it out. You can then download the optimized file and it'll give you a new SVG file. And it's going to say, I'm going to keep it. There you go, right there, optimize SVG. You can then use that. You got to test, okay? You really have to test this. So we can then take that SVG file and put it in our web page. So we can use it in our pages in place of logos and icons and all kinds of different things that we want to use these for. All right, now, the if I go back to the TXT file, let me take a look at that. You're going to see that I've got a lot of things in here that you can take a look at. Inkscape, here's the, uh, if you don't have Illustrator, you can always do that. You're going to see right here that there are some things that we have to consider. Uh, and one of the things is called a fallback. Not all browsers, Internet Explorer, I'm looking at you, some mobile devices, etc., do not support SVG, meaning they'll show basically nothing there in its place. They won't know what SVG is. So you can use what's called a fallback. We will look at that in the next video when I show you how to actually put this in your page. One thing I do want to mention, and I already just kind of said, was you have to be careful about what browsers support SVG. And it's these days, you can use it, okay? But there's a website right here called Can I Use? I'm going to go copy that and then paste that into my browser. And you'll see that here's a table. And you can make it expand if you want to make us see more of it. But you can see here's a table of things that support SVG. Everything in green supports it. You can see Android browser back in the day in 2 did not support SVG. You'll see the big one, IE8, IE7, 6, et cetera, do not support in an, uh, SVG. So we have to have some kind of fallback if you care about these different browsers. Okay, And like I said, that's what we are going to take a look at uh, in the next video. All right. Uh, let me close that. So to close up all these, we're going to get the logo. We're going to put it in a page that I've already created. And I'll show you how to do what's called a fallback so that old browsers will work with some kind of logo.